Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Hey You Guys Review Show. Hope you are very well. Scott Davis here, joined as ever by the lovely Linda Marrick. How are you, Linda? Hello. I'm a fine, fine. How are you? Good, thank you. Good, thank you. Yeah. Long time good. no see, not. Long time no see. Yeah. Not well in Zoom world. We've just done, we're in the same clothes. It's probably a bit of a spoiler. Yeah. But uh, in real life, it's been a little while, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a while actually. Yeah. And I, I saw, you, saw from you from afar. Saw you from afar, saw you from afar, from afar last week. Premieres yeah. and things. So uh, yeah, busy, busy yeah. times. The film world is is uh, is is thriving, which is good. It's good for us. Yeah. Yeah. Films again. Good movies fantastic. out. Good right. movies out, etc. This week, particularly, you are spoilt for choice. Obviously, mm-hmm. Sonic is out, and that's doing really well. Morbius is also out. It's doing less well. <laughs> doing less, less, less well. I'm not going to say any more about Morbius. I've said what I need to say about that film. Uh, and there's a lot out this week, of course. It's Easter week, and obviously there's a half term coming up, so there's lots of things out for everybody to enjoy. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to the videos and to the Hey You Guys everything else. Lots of content going up. In recent weeks and you can also if you haven't already after this i think probably afterwards given the release dates you'll be able to check out our review of the north man robert eggers's new film starring alexander skarsgård and anya taylor joy that'll be on the website very soon as well but today we're going to talk about the lost city the very very fun new film starring sandra bullock daniel radcliffe channing tatum and a certain brad pitt in a very small <laughs> but very very funny uh, cameo uh linda this has been screened for a while now it's come out in the u.s so this yeah, there's definitely I... a uh the studio are very very confident again paramount having a very good year so far this year mm. uh another winner on their hands and they screened it very very early which is always a good sign in our circles if things are screened a couple of weeks before early yeah before um but yeah do you i mean the the praise has been very high for this i mean so funny before. enough i only just saw it yesterday because oh. i kept um yeah i every time i was invited to a screening there was something that was more more urgent that was coming out on the, that week so i had to sort of go to that instead so i i knew i was gonna love it because i i had heard the praises and uh, yeah i uh, yeah i i saw it yesterday and i laughed all the way through and uh, <laughs> it's a the right kind of it's one hour and 40 minutes is that right one hour yeah 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 in and out. it's a perfect perfect, perfect co- little comedy <laughs> for a comedy um yeah i loved it uh should we say what it's about go on oh i've got to do it again have i so the lost city the lost city sandra bullock plays a romance novelist and she's bringing out her latest book which for her feels like it's the the kind of the last maybe the last one of her career she wants to do something new with her with yeah. her writing as part of the book tour that she's on for this what could be her last book uh Channing Tatum's character comes along because he is the face of the books he is an actor who has been kind of recruited he's as a, the face of a, the book yeah. he's the long-haired Hold blonde on. bombshell of a man that's on the covers posing like this with women um and uh those two get kind of fussed together and uh Daniel Radcliffe's character comes into it and he seems to think that Sandra Bullock's character might have the key to some lost gold and lost treasures even though most of her work is fiction but maybe it's not fiction maybe it's not mm-hmm. but you'll have to discover that for yourself uh so they go on a bit of a bit of a quest a la romancing the stone shall we yeah. say which in yeah. and Nile, and mummy two... mummy and uh, romancing the stone yeah. also, you know the... those two wonderful uh... 80s films starring michael douglas and kathleen <laughs> that scene you should go and find immediately i think they're on disney plus yeah. anyway um but yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a good word good use of the word rump i think rump is the is a good word to use for this particular film it is a, a great little yeah. rump and uh, lots I mean, of fun. It is, it is a pastiche of those movies. Of course. Let's of course. say it's not like entirely serious. It's very silly and uh, it doesn't take itself seriously at all. And it's uh, very slapsticky. And um, there are some, honestly, every gag worked in it. And I, I think it's really hard to, to write good comedy. And I genuinely am so impressed with this, with the writing because. I think you need to to write good comedy. You have to have good gags, be self-aware, don't take yourself so seriously and have a cast that is prepared to take the piss out themselves. And I think we we have all of those things there. And I just generally really love this film. I think it's absolutely hilarious. And yeah, very good. I love Sandra Bullock. Who doesn't like Sandra? Who doesn't like Channing Tatum? Hey, and who I love does- Sandra who doesn't yeah. like And who doesn't like uh, Brad Pitt as a, a slightly sexier dog the bounty hunter? So- <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 
<laughs> Why doesn't I said because I I uh, uh, mic drop interviewed Sandra Bullock and Daniel Radcliffe yeah. and I said to them about what well, Brad Pitt should do more comedies. Why is he not doing more comedies? He's very funny. And Sandra Bullock True. was sort of like, well, you know, it, she was almost saying as if like he likes to like do it now and again. You know, go yeah, back yeah. to it once in a while and do it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, it's nice to see him in this little cameo, which I think came, I'm not sure, but I think they kind of did one each, one for each other, because he's in this, and Sandra Bullock's uh-huh. kind of a cameo-ish in Bullet Train, which is coming out in the summer. I think. She oh, had- I didn't know oh, that. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's so I don't know if that's right <laughs> because of the timelines in terms of COVID and everything, but it certainly seems that it was they did kind of one. If like, you do this, I'll do that kind of thing. Maybe. I don't know. We'll find out in the summer, won't we? But mm. Sandra Bullock is in Bullet Train. But I don't think she has a very big, prominent role, which would make sense since Brad Pitt doesn't have a big or prominent role in this one. Uh, but yes, it's great. It's great fire. I don't think all of the jokes landed. However, <laughs> can't deny that it is a it is a, a very, very fun time at the cinema. I also like the fact that they it's, they ostensibly switch the, gen- the genders around. You know, it's not... Yeah. Danning Tatum starts as the he's the big like hunky guy on the front and he's the guy that's going to save the, the woman in the book whereas in real life it's the other way around which I kind of like a bit of a wet blanket yeah a bit of a wet blanket Sandra Bullock's the one that's the <laughs> that's got the nouse even though she's never been in that situation she has the kind of confidence um, in, uh, the, the um, like, and Daniel cool Radcliffe he. Daniel Radcliffe's fantastic as the little he's great yeah the, he's great fun yeah. the villain oh he's great isn't he he he's really genuinely fun, is yeah. but we we know that Daniel Radcliffe is good at comedy you know we've seen him do like other comedy roles and he just really I think he's really feels at home in it I think he's good in serious films but I I genuinely think he really feels at home in comedy and uh, yeah partic- also off. particularly when he's doing the Brit the British as well I think if this yeah. was doing in America I'm not sure it would have landed I think it works because he's doing it as a British aristocrat yeah. or every place you know and he's yeah, you know he's yeah. the son that wants his dad's attention so he's going to try and find the goal to get yeah. his dad's approval even though his dad loves his brother etc cetera, etc cetera. one of those one of those kind of stories but uh <laughs> yeah he's very very he's very very fun I think he he deserves a lot of credit for trying to do different things after Harry Potter because it would have been quite easy to do the same kind of stuff yeah. But, uh, I like the fact that he's tried to mix it up and he's made very, very weird choices, like playing Weird Al Yankovic in the upcoming biopic, which is oh, I can't wait so for that. out of left field. But mm. also, I think it was, I think the whole world went, what? And then went, wait. Oh, yeah. That's kind of cool. It makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so uh, yeah. So I, I did say that to him and said, you know, I don't, I, I, <laughs> that's when I interviewed him. I said, do you think the world is ready for you to win your Oscar? for playing World <laughs> Yankovic. Sandra Bullock was like, yes, the world is ready. <laughs> so let's let's see if that comes to fruition. But it's a great time at the cinema. And, you know, every year there's always one kind of, they used to call them sleeper hits back in the day. Obviously it yeah. doesn't really work the same these days. I mean, it does sometimes, but this would have been the classic sleeper hit where it would have been successful, but then had legs and just carried on and carried on and carried on. I think the repeat viewings of this will just be, will bear more fruit than the first time not that the first yeah. time isn't fun but the second and third time might you know with comedies things are funnier second or third time sometimes and you discover things that you didn't before I think this mm. is definitely one of those that will that will certainly have some legs and has been pretty successful in the US which is great it's nice to see a big studio comedy doing really well at the cinema because it could have quite easily gone to a, a streamer so it's nice again similar to what we I think the last before. comedy that did really really well was Game Night and that was a long time ago long time ago at least yeah. like four or five years ago yeah because um, the big the big hitters aren't really around anymore. Either. Like Adam yeah. Sandler does these movies at Netflix. Jim Carrey doesn't really make much movie, any movies these days. Will Ferrell's been hot and cold. Ryan Reynolds kind of flits between comedy and he does a big kind yeah. of action-y sci-fi thing and then Deadpool then does but, a comedy. So Sandra yeah, Bullock, most... you know, I haven't seen Sandra Bullock. She hasn't done a big, one of her big kind of rom com kind of things for a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, She's yeah. Doing more prestige kind of things. So Yeah. And most yeah. of these comedies have tendency to sort of just go directly to Netflix. So we, we can't really gauge how well they're doing at the box office. Yeah. So it's really sort of, I think it's good. I'm, it's encouraging to see a big um, studio uh, like Paramount, like really yeah. investing in comedy. And I'm, I, I'm, it's encouraging, really. I'm, I'm really happy that they do it. They've done that. And, uh, and it's worked out for them, more yeah. importantly. Well, hey, let's so, look at it this way. Netflix's Red Notice, which is, a, you know, in some respects, in the same ballpark, uh, was an absolute travesty. So it's nice that A, it's on in cinemas and B, there's a trifecta of talent, plus, you know, a, a Brad Pitt in there as well, who are able to carry a movie and to release it and to make it make $30 million, which if this was a Sandra mm-hmm. Bullock movie released in 2001, say, yeah, 
you make she makes a movie that makes 30 million dollars opening weekend everyone's like bravo that's amazing so it's nice to see some original comedies original movies even doing very well at the box office that's, yeah. that's really yeah, good yeah, yeah. And that can only be a good thing for yeah. the industry that's long long may it continue linda let's give your scores then for the lost city what are you going to give it um uh, oh go on let's go four four <laughs> out of five four. yeah i was going to say three because a couple of things are very silly and you know sometimes like my sort of uh, my patience threshold gets <laughs> in the way of me enjoying them <laughs> but at the end of the day um i thought i on the whole i really enjoyed it and i can't really lie and it, it, it for me it's a four four yeah. star movie i like yeah it. so i would have given it three and a half but we don't do halves so i would yeah. downgrade it to th- three but again a very so i keep giving solid things but it's a solid three stars i think but it's a three and a half yeah, fair really enough, fair enough. It's a, yeah. it is a, it's not a four star it's not quite there but it is undoubtedly so much fun and it's such a good time at the cinema uh before we go we just wanted to touch on one more release that's out this week yeah. there's a plethora of releases this week but there's a there's a british film that's been in the pipeline for a long time it feels like it was supposed mm-hmm. to be out a year ago some people did see it a year ago it's finally working its way out which is operation mincemeat uh which is uh the new film by john madden uh who directed the best exotic marigold hotel shakespeare in love i want to say yeah, shakespeare in love yeah, i mean the, the oscar award uh, oscar of, winning yeah, very award worthy, john, john madden <laughs> i think he did miss sloan as well didn't he was it miss sloan he did? um i'm not entirely sure i think uh, he did miss sloan with yeah. jessica chastain i think anyway yeah. uh yeah it's a new uh second world war british film starring colin firth matthew mcfadden kelly mcdonald and again a flight with the northman a plethora of other amazing yeah, jason isaac uh, and it only uh, it only dawned on me like the two days ago when I was watching a featurette because the premiere as we're recording this the premiere is tonight which I'm going to mm. that, I'm not giving this away but the character that Johnny Flynn plays who it is oh it's, it's, it's Ian Fleming Ian yeah. Fleming I was like yeah <laughs> how did I not put that together I didn't put it together <laughs> well I mean he was he, he's uh, the, 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 the real the person person so. <laughs> quietly typing away saying he he's, a, he's writing a spy idea. movie From come on <laughs> um on Linda, yeah, just spy a, book just uh, obviously it's it's had a lot of there's been posters in London obviously not everybody not all you guys live in London but tube stations and everything there's been posters up for a while now because it was supposed to come out at the end of last year and then because of the Omicron variant this and films like The Duke and Cyrano and a few others were pushed back because of they lean a little bit more to the slightly older audience than than to the teenage audience shall we say Um, but finally it's coming out and it had a lot of praise uh, very quickly Linda did you do you agree with that praise oh I loved it fantastic movie yeah knew nothing about the story absolutely nothing about the story was not even aware there was such a thing and that there was a a whole sort of department of trying so uh, the stories that they're fabricating um, uh, sort of false, false uh, information to feed um, German intelligence during the Second World War. And to do so, they need to find a, a, a dead body and suit him up as if he was um, a soldier and put in his pockets and his briefcase false information about the invasion of Sicily, saying they're going to invade, invade Greece rather than, than Sicily. And then hope that Hitler's arm, Hitler's intelligence will um, eat the lie, basically. So that's the story. Deception. Uh, it's incredible. It's a true story. It's, it's true incredible story. that it's Again, a true story. There's so many facets of the world, both yeah. world wars, that I, I <laughs> and lots of people just don't know about because they're either, you know, there's other things that people talk about and there's other, other, other things that... Um, they've been told and made into films and made into dramas and all that kind of stuff and this one yeah. i don't think i ever knew about before and i was like this is it's strange actually now thinking about it i was like this is like something out of a spy novel and then lo and behold now i was like oh okay course, kind of makes yes, sense yeah. even though it was a it was a true story so it's kind oh, of I, I, kind of a thing I that is the ba- not the basis but an inspiration on on a certain 007 in Seven, some it way. is yeah yeah, yeah. Um, m there's m seven. there is q and yeah, yeah there's an yeah, m, I, 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 yeah. I found it absolutely hilarious that um the matthew mcfadden's um uh character walking around sort of uh the foreign office saying what was everyone writing a novel now i i love that i love that sort of uh <laughs> the, his character is brilliant it's like a bit like tom in succession actually a lot of tom in that character yeah there's a bit of lineage to his character and mm. yeah 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 yeah. he's got a slight little smarm slight yeah. slight yeah. little smarm, slight smarm. Him, but yeah. um yeah yeah i enjoyed it i enjoyed it i i it, it it's it's made more theatrical by 
John Madden and he, the way he makes films because this this yes. for a lot of it it felt like a like a TV drama that you'd watch on a Sunday afternoon or something you know for for a couple of hours but it's elevated slightly by the fact that John Madden is a very good filmmaker so he he the, the tension that he adds and the the dramatics and the characters and everything he raises it above no disrespect to a TV drama but yeah you probably understand what I'm saying in terms of the look and feel of it it feels cinematic but uh, yeah I enjoyed it I thought it was I thought it was it was a I well, also okay. believe uh, like plausibility for me is really important and but yeah. for me I think it's a real real sort of period piece because the way London is filmed during the the sort of the at the worst of the blitz and people carrying on having fun and going to these private mem members clubs jazz yeah. clubs dance halls I have thought all of those speak details easy. for me, <laughs> speaking these, all the, those details for me were more important than the story itself. I just yeah. thought that was so convincingly done. And that is why I love the film. And obviously, I think the, the, the story of the dead body is neither is the hook, you know, is a, it's a, the sort of uh, the, uh, the premise that gets you into the, the, wanting to go and see the film but what's the the stuff that's around the film the stuff that's around that main uh, plot is the more the more important stuff I just thought it's so well done G genuinely I'm really so impressed by it yeah yeah it's very it is very very um very solid filmmaking very very solid storytelling and, and people will enjoy it there's certainly an audience with stuff like this and uh it's a uh, also a very very good history lesson into into how how things were done back then because we take stuff for granted don't we these days and yeah. you know especially as we sit here in the midst of a of another at least a war going on somewhere in the world that it's um yeah, yeah it yeah, shows yeah. you the, the the links that some heroes will go to to protect their country yeah. so it yeah. kind of yeah. all that stuff kind of rings rings true even more right now but uh but yeah it's a very fascinating story and i knew nothing about it so i'm, I'm glad that i know about it now because if nothing else it's something maybe to talk to my granddad about i'd be like oh that film operation mince i didn't know that happened yeah, 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 yeah. go off on yeah, a yeah. oh yes operation mince meat blah, 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 blah. so yeah. you know that's something <laughs> something to talk about next time i see him uh anyway yeah. operation mince meat is also out this friday uh yeah. and uh, oh linda your quick quick marks for operation oh but four like four stars i've reviewed it four. for the jewish chronicle just same as i reviewed for um, uh, the northman so yeah four stars for me for, absolutely yeah. uh you know i just can't fault it i mean um i think it could have been slightly shorter but then yeah no i really liked it yeah it's just two it. hours isn't it just a, it's just it's a, it's yeah. a, a very yeah. small shade over two hours but it's two yeah. hours really uh solo three stars for me there we go. Yeah, good, very, good, very good. good. Go see yeah. it. It's yeah, I'm very generous this week. A, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been on I've lots of threes today, but that, hey, it's a three star film. That's that's, but it's mm. perfectly uh, perfectly good and definitely go. Three stars are good. Yeah. Penelope Wilton, star. Oh yeah, she's great. What a star she is. She's um, very great. She's very good. Go. Yes, yeah. Operation Minsk is in cinema this Friday. Lost City, which we spoke about at the beginning, that's out tomorrow as we record this Wednesday. So it's coming mm -hmm. out a couple of days early to 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 beat the crowds, yeah. shall we say, with all the <laughs> other stuff that's out and of course sonic is still doing fantastic numbers as are a few other releases as well so uh, lots lots to dive into uh we will be back next week i can't even in my head think about oh next week next week we will be talking about oh mr okay. nicholas cage oh yes i'm see seeing that very mr. shortly nicholas cage i cannot wait to talk about this film oh my goodness gracious uh i'll have to bring out my little they gave us little masks with nicholas cage's face on so next week you won't see me you'll see nicholas cage being me mm -hmm. reviewing the unbearable weight of massive talent okay. which is out all next right week in cinemas uh until then <laughs> take care of yourselves have a lovely easter as well and we'll see you after the break take care bye 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 ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? Yeah, it is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!